Hello and welcome to the Moncast. My name's Sam. And my name is Stevie. And the current score is 1-0 to Pokemon. And this time we're discussing the second episodes, the Digiteam Complete and the Double Trouble Header. Let's start with the Digiteam Complete. Davis, Yoli, Cody, TK, Kari, Sora and Izzy all venture into the digital world and are almost immediately ambushed by some of the evil Digimon Emperor's slaves, Sneemon, Mojimon and Dramojimon. Davis and Vimon are taken hostage, so everyone else runs away and somehow manages to escape from the Flying Beetle, Giant Mole and Yeti, with an overlord that has security cameras everywhere. They find the Digeg of Knowledge and the Digeg of Love, which Cody and Yoli claim, revealing Armadillmon and Hawkmon, the armor digivolve into Digmon and Horsemon to go and save Davis and Vimon, who then armor digivolves into Flamedramon so that Flamedramon can defeat Mojimon, Digmon can defeat Dramojimon, and Horsemon can defeat Sneemon. Then they go home where Vimon, Hawkmon and Armadillmon de-digivolve into Demi-Vimon, Poromon and Upamon, and then the episode ends. And breathe. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. First of all, the title is called The Digi Team Complete. I'm not happy with this. Why? They didn't have to put the word Digi into it. They did. People might not get that it's Digimon without it. I think they'd understand it. Probably. But it starts off with Davis doing the recap. Oh, I didn't get the recap on mine. I skipped it. Oh, I watched it. And it was Davis narrating it all, being his usual awful self. The only proper problem I have with it, though, is when he says that he doesn't like the look of the Digimon Emperor, because he's not seen the Digimon Emperor before, so it makes no sense. It reminds me a little bit, just to jump to the very last, like, three seconds of the episode, when they say something about the Digimon Emperor, and then there's, like, a silhouette of him, and he's saying something like, oh, that's not likely. It's like, he can't hear them either. Yeah, that response just doesn't make sense. That's just a, a quick jump to the very end. He's psychic. It picks up right where it left off. With them all just in a pile on the middle of the computer room floor. Yeah, basically no time has passed at all. But Davis is saying how he went to the digital world and fought monsters and it was amazing. Yoli wants to go back even though she's never been before. I knew you were going to complain about Yoli wanting to go. I have in my notes, I swear Sam, if you complain about Yoli wanting to go. No, 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 it's not that Yoli wants to go. It's she says, let's go back. Like she's been there before. I've got no problem with Yoli wanting to go. I'm, I'm really excited. I think Yoli's cool. I, I like the fact that she seems to be the only one who's genuinely like, let's go do this. Because Cody is like, someone's just put a leak on the floor and that's Cody's personality. Just, there he is. But the leak's just stood up straight. No, it's not that exciting. He's just limp. Cody says the idea of fighting monsters would be cool, but tonight's macaroni and cheese night at his place. So we can't miss it. And then everybody starts listing all the food that they're having for dinner. And I'm like, okay. But if someone told me there was a completely different world full of monsters that I can go to, I'd probably skip Mac and Cheese Night just this one time. But it's Cody and he's boring and dead inside. So it's like, no. Mac and Cheese is great. It is. But also an entirely new world full of monsters. But no Mac and Cheese. So is it really that great? I guess we'll just never go to the digital world then because Mac and Cheese... Cody is so excited by mac and cheese, or as as Cody would put it, I'm so excited by mac and cheese. I'm going to eat mac and cheese tonight. He just has no emotion in his voice at all. I will talk about this a lot in this episode, because one of the problems I have with O2 is people don't seem to match the tone of what's going on emotionally. And this is one of the first ones where, oh, there's a whole new world full of stuff. Okay, well, there's mac and cheese tonight, so I'm going to go home to that. It's a whole new world to see. But everyone's reacting like in such a mellow way and no one's freaking out or screaming or discussing the events that took place. They just seem like really disconnected from the actual events that are going on. And it just seems really weird. Davis just thinks it's really cool. That's his whole reaction to the digital world so far. It's cool. We did a thing. I'm like, okay, but you went to a whole new world and found a partner and fought monsters and you're like, yeah, we went somewhere else. Yeah, that was the best. But at least Yoli's like, I want to go. I want to go now. Some actual enthusiasm. Yeah. So we get the original kids all meeting up at a park to discuss stuff. 
whilst we also get Cody's practicing Kendo on his balcony and Yoli's fixing his computer. Yay! She should have done it before the brownies, but at least she's actually doing it now. I get the feeling that she's actually at her house, but in the dub they've just made it seem like she's at Cody's. And then Davis is at his house remembering Vimon. Vimon lives in the ceiling. Yeah. But the old kids are talking about armor evolution and about the new kids and how they're this like new generation of Digidestined and stuff. So they all agree to meet up in the morning and check out the Digigate. Well, except for the ones that aren't Ty, Sora and Izzy. <laughs> because Joe can't go because of an exam and Matt can't go because of band practice. And Joe, I kind of get. I could see that being a thing, especially because of Joe's personality. I think Matt might skip a day on band practice on the off chance he can go meet Gabumon again. The thing is, that's the thing a good friend would do. And Matt, having the crest of friendship, is not allowed to be a good friend. It just seems really weird how... Like, if you had a friend who was in an alternate world and you hung out with them when you were 10, and then you're now, what, 13? Something like that. And someone's like, oh, by the way, there are gates opening up back to that world where you can see your friend. And would you be like, I've got bang practice. And also mac and cheese, so... No... Mac and cheese would definitely stop me going, but band practice, maybe not. Okay, I think you need to uh, sort out your priorities. Going back to this conversation between everyone, Joe has an awesome new hairstyle. Yeah, he's grown his hair out. He looks super suave. Joe's hair is just awesome now. Everybody else seems pretty much the same. Apart from like TK and Kari, because obviously they had to grow up. They've grown so much in such a short space of time. They've practically doubled in height. Puberty does that to you. They also seem older than the kids when they went to the Digital World the first time. Like, they look older than Ty and Matt did in the first season. Also, Joe has a great line where he says he has an oral test on laryngitis. I thought that was funny. It's a joke that pretty much no kid is ever going to get. Unless someone's there, like, with laryngitis, and they're like, ha ha, it's funny because it's, it's hurting my throat. How do you even have an oral test on that? Is it he has to talk about it? Is it he has to examine someone with laryngitis? Maybe it's like a lecture. He has to go and give like a presentation or something about laryngitis. Maybe he's just being tested to see if he has laryngitis. Maybe. I could see Joe doing that. So it fast forwards to the next day, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah, and Izzy's in the computer room by himself. He's looking at the Digigate and he says it's closed. The new kids come in and join him. And then he's like, oh, the Digigate's suddenly open. And I'm not sure whether that means that it's only open when the new kids are around or whether it opens at set times conveniently. I think it's just plot convenience. Prana would, wouldn't mind it being that when it's only around when the new kids are around. I think it might be it only opens when the Emperor opens it. That actually makes sense, you know. Which is why it closes overnight when the Emperor's not there as well. So the new kids all join him and the guy opens and they all plan to go to the digital world. Davis Yoli, Cody, TK, Kari, Sora and Izzy and Ty gets dragged off with the teacher that turns up. Yeah, Mr. Fujiyama appears and wants to talk to the kids, saying how Tai, Izzy and Sora have graduated and he hasn't seen them in ages. So Tai comes up with this plan to talk to him elsewhere, so he like pushes him away and drags him off, whilst everybody else jumps into the digital world. And random aside note is, when they go to the digital world and they open the gate, all they do is hold up their digivices. And I know it's an animation thing, but it just looks like they don't do anything. They just hold it up and like it's a proximity thing. So do, would they press a button and it activates it? Because like, how would they know that that's a function? Or just holding it up, does it like suck you into the digital world? What happens if you're nearby an open gate and you just hold up your digivice by accident? Or it's like hanging on your pocket and you walk past. Do you just get pulled in? It could be accelerometer activated accelerometer whatever it's called in a phone that measures like speed it just looks weird that they all stood there like just raising up a digivice it could be like the infrared that they have on the nintendo switch yeah maybe maybe it does that i think we're overthinking the tech <laughs> behind the digivices when the gate opens it sends out a signal and the digivices pick it up it's bluetooth because technically the the, the d3s have antenna so it could be that they need the right wi-fi password to go to the digital world they need to do that thing where you press a button on your phone and you press a button on the router at the same time. So yeah, they go to the digital world. Cody and Yoli get new clothes. Yoli's kind of weird because it's like a pilot. And then Cody gets a burlap sack for potatoes. I honestly couldn't tell the difference between his regular clothes. He's so boring. Cody is such a boring person. He's just bland. There's nothing to him. To quote Louise Belcher from Bob's Burgers, 
If he was a spice, he'd be flour. If he was a book, he'd be two books. I need to look up Cody's outfits, though, just so I can see what the actual difference is. It's almost like a giant sweater, and then his other one is a giant sweater with a purple line around it. Honestly, in my head, I think all that changed is that his shirt and his pants swapped colours. That's all I can think of in my head. As if we can't even remember his clothes. Oh my god. It is basically just like his shirt and his pants swap colours. Oh, that's amazing. His clothes barely change. It just changes colour. It goes from purple and khaki to khaki and purple. His shoes don't even change. Oh wait, no, I'm wrong. His shoes get the tiniest difference. The line down the middle starts splitting off into two lines down the middle. Whoa, whoa, slow down there. But like, the neck and the cuffs also get like a purple line around it. He's just so boring, look at him. The difference is so tiny. It's hardly worth mentioning. I want someone to tell me that Cody's their favourite character. I want someone to tell me this. And then I want to talk to this person. I need to talk to them about why. Why they look at him and go, you know what? He's actually the best. Maybe he's the best because he does the least wrong. I'm looking at all the fan art right now of Cody and it's all like... Most of it's just him in his usual outfit. Let's get back into what was going on. They arrived in the digital world and conveniently all of the Digimon were nearby. Well, before that happens, the Emperor sees they've arrived and he sends out Sneemon, like straight away. And that's when Davis finds Vimon, who's brought Beomon and Tentamon, Patamon and Gatomon, that's the one. Yeah, conveniently, all of the partners that don't belong to Tai or anyone else that isn't there. So then the Emperor's cronies attack. They attack, but Sneemon avoids it. And what they do is they click on the still image of Sneemon and they drag it around the screen. <laughs> I'm not even joking, that's what it looks like. So then Gatamon gets hurt by an attack and she says that without her tail ring, she's useless. Which is really weird. So you've got this powerful champion level Digimon, but you've also given them an extreme crutch that they need to do a certain thing in order to be powerful. So why Greymon's the best? Greymon is is a dinosaur, is powerful. It's not, oh, I'm a cat, but also I have a tail ring. And if the tail ring gets taken away from me, I'm basically a rookie level. But Davis tries to evolve Vimon into Flame Drummon, but then a Dramogamon appears underneath him and he falls into a pit. And then Mojimon appears and hits Vimon, who also like knocks him into the pit as well, so they're gone. And then we've got Yoli and Kodu talking. And then this is another one of those like the tone doesn't match what's going on. So Yoli like falls to the floor onto her knees. Yoli says the ground opened up and swallowed them, and then Cody says, Well, I wanna go home now, with zero emotion. Like in their eyes, Davis has just died, and Cody's still like, Oh, I'll just be emotionless and make a joke. Oh no, I want to go home now. So, okay, but a child has just been killed in front of your eyes, but, you know, that's cool. Yoli full-on cries. Yoli does scream. She's like, I want to go home right now, this is not good, I'm not having fun. Cody's just, there's mac and cheese at home that I can eat. It will be edible. So yeah, Cody and Yoli are both wusses. I mean, really, I'd celebrate if I saw Davis fall into a pit. He's not actually bad in this episode. I was watching, I was keeping an eye out for him for our uh, Ash or davis bit and he was actually okay in this episode out of all the kids he's the one who's most hype like he's like oh my god let's go back and fight things so he gets a pass from me on this episode he he did okay yeah he's just a bit cocky but that's who he is i'm I'm not gonna hold that against him for now so it cuts to davis who's pinned to a cliff and the emperor appears and says that it was easy to catch him and then it cuts to a shot from the perspective of the digimon emperor looking down at, at davis and for some reason instead of davis being like on a wall because there's like it's like a a canyon basically and there's two walls and then there's a drop into the darkness he's positioned on the darkness so it's like he's floating on nothing it's me being petty with animation again but it just it just looked weird he makes he like clicks his fingers and makes vimon appear on the opposite wall it's the weakest click ever by the way because he's got gloves on but there is a canyon with a wall that can like fall away and then another wall come out with vimon pinned to it i think the emperor just has some sort of ability to construct things in the digital world i have a problem with this entire scene later and i'll talk about it later because it's in one of my other segments but he's got davis's digivice and d-terminal and his plan is to control vimon and put a dark ring on him but we'll talk about that later on because that's not what's happening right now because it cuts to the other kids who are in a forest for some reason they've all ran into the same forest area which is like three minutes away from where they were i don't know how they escaped they shouldn't be able to outrun everything. They've gone far enough that they can stop and just look at their digivices and have a walk and stuff. So, like, what happened? How did they get away? 
but their devices start beeping and then they're saying oh there must be a building or something nearby and then Beamon and his uh Tentamon are like oh there's no buildings nearby except this one building so they go to this one building and it's a temple and it's just there there's just a temple that they can walk up so as they go up Yoli's complaining as they climb and I'm like well she wanted to come here really badly but now there's like actual movement involved and it's like no I don't want this so Yoli's whining congratulations she does whine a lot you know who doesn't whine in this episode who Davis and he's going through the worst right now (laughs) so they get to the top of this temple which like I've said has always been there apparently even when like the dark masters were there and everything it's just a temple with an open door and you go inside, and there's some digi eggs. It's digi world weirdness. No, it's plot convenient. Let's get these two eggs and stick them on pedestals in a temple that's there for no reason. Oh, look, they've got the crests of the two people that came with them. How convenient. So Izzy and Sora try and pick up the eggs, and they fail. So they decide to ask Cody and Yoli. And oh, look, they can do it. And then kari has got a line, which is literally, they were able to lift them. And then TK's like, just like Davis did yesterday. I'm like, oh, you don't need these sort of lines. You don't need to be like, oh, they picked them up. Yes, we saw. We saw them pick up. We're here as well as as well as you guys. I mean, Kari, who are you telling that to? Everyone's looking at this thing going on. So why are you saying it? I know they've picked them up. You know they've picked them up. They also know they've picked them up. So why are you saying it? They're saying it because it's clunky, weird lines. The bit I like more is when it just has a padding shot of everyone just going, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ooh. As they're all just amazed that they can pick up these eggs. And then light columns appear and Hawkmon and Armadillamon form. I don't know about you, but when they appear, it's kind of terrifying because they're there and suddenly they just lunge out of the light pillar at their people. Yeah, they just attack the camera. And then we see it again for their, of their own little uh, stat screens that they get. There's a lot of stat screens in this episode. We get Armadillamon and, and Hawkmon, and they know their partner's names already and stuff, and they're talking. And then Sora talks to Yoli a lot, because Yoli doesn't want to fight, so Yoli is exactly like Mimi, because Mimi didn't want to fight, even though Yoli's completely different to Mimi. Like, she seems super excited to be in this world, she just has an aversion to fighting. Mimi didn't want to be in the world at all, she wanted no part of it. Yoli actively wants to be there. She just has an aversion to the whole violence side of it, which I totally understand. So Sora convinces her that it's fine. And then Izzy has a conversation with a bag of wheatgrass, saying how he's curious. And how, oh, you send me like a kid who's got a lot of questions. And I say, do I? I don't know. When's macaroni and cheese? He's just so boring. And they're trying to find these contrived ways of making it so they're like, oh, there are these new people who match these crests. I'm like, Yoli hasn't shown love. If anything, she's shown curiosity. But apparently Cody is also being really curious. I'm like, well, yes, it's literally our new world they've gone into if anyone's not curious. Then again, if anybody wasn't going to be curious, it'd be Cody. I'm like, I'm here now. I actually preferred Cody and Izzy's talk to Yoli and Sora's. Maybe. I just felt like it was easy going like, oh, you're knowledgeable, yeah? Yeah? You like knowledge, yeah? Well done. Yeah, yeah, it works for you. It works for you. It works for you. Yeah, it works for you. There we go. It's fine. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's fine. It's good. At least it wasn't, hey, Yoli, you're Mimi, which is the crest of sincerity. Go through her entire arc in two minutes. Here's the crest of love. <laughs> At least Sora can see qualities from other people within Yoli, and that's why she's going, okay, maybe that's why she can lift the crest of love. But why would she be able to lift the crest of love if she's like the person with the crest of sincerity? I don't know, but it's better than making out that Cody's curious and has questions. He hasn't. He hasn't got a single one. But Sam, he has so many unanswered questions. Doesn't have any of them. (laughs) So then they just go, Digiama Digivolve now. Why? Why did they evolve? They're just dead. Because they're just like, it's a thing we can do. (laughs) Shrug noise, just... I don't know. I don't know, we've got to fill like a minute, let's just have them evolve. At least Hawkman told them how to do it. As opposed to Davis just knowing. Yeah, Davis just kind of guessed. So then it cuts back to Davis and the Emperor is trying to put a ring on Vimon. And it's slowly approaching and Vimon's just talking as it does. It's going really slowly considering we've seen them flying at super fast speeds. But it's getting there, almost there, almost there. And then Halsamon destroys it. And then Gatamon appears and goes against the Emperor and Wormon stops her. Davis's digivice gets knocked out of his hand and Yoli just gets dragged across the screen. Like, click, drag. 
He catches it. And she's like, thanks. That's what she says. Just thanks. Well done, Yoli. So then it suddenly cuts to like Davis and, and Vimon being on the floor. It's like, okay, so they, I guess they're saved. That's cool. I mean, the, the emperor could have just like clicked his fingers and, and Vimon could have fallen into the wall and disappeared again, but it's, it's fine. So then Davis and Vimon are down and, and, and Vimon evolves and then they're fighting everybody and all the kids get to defeat a dark ring of one of the Digimon. So Yoli gets Sneemon, Flamedemon gets Mojimon and Digmon gets Dramogamon. Why do you keep calling it Dramogimon? Don't know. Is it Dramogamon? I don't think it is. It might be called that in Savers, I can't remember. But yeah, so they defeat the Dark Rings and then the Emperor leaves and they all go home and the Digimon are all now in training level, which is cool, I guess. I guess they have tiny ones with them. And then apparently Ty's just done talking to Mr. Fujiyama. So they've been talking about girls all day. From essentially after school finishes to night time, which can be several hours. And they've been talking about exclusively girls the entire time. So then Tentamon and Beamon are probably staying in the digital world. They're not coming over to the to the real world, which I think is a bit unfair because we've got Gatamon and, and Patamon. So because there was an evil Digimon Emperor in the in the uh, digital world, and my partner was over there, they'd be out here like fast. They'd be like just living in my house eating nachos or something. They'd be having mac and cheese because that's the most exciting meal. It's the most exciting, actually, to be honest. I really want mac and cheese right now. Then the episode ends with, like I said at the start, the Digimon Emperor responding to something that Davis says, even though he couldn't possibly hear it. Any notes? Let me have a quick flick through. There's a shot where Patamon looks extremely round, and it's really weird. It's near the end after they've defeated all the monsters, and they're all just lined up and having a chat. There's a shot where Patamon is just a beach ball. They just look too wide and not tall enough. And I'll need to find a screenshot of it to share on Twitter, because it looks just weird. <laughs> uh, what else? I'm sad that Gatamon has now just been entirely reduced to cat puns, and that's her entire character now. Like I said before, it does seem really contrived that she's now a rookie level, essentially. And there's no real need for it. Like, this entire adventure could also happen with her being Salamon. It would work just as well. Because why is it that all of these rookie levels use the armor, uh, the eggs to evolve into armor Digimon? But this champion level can also use them to evolve into an armor Digimon. Spoilers? Oh, come on, it's been out for so long. You're spoiling things. Fine, I won't talk about it now, but... It just seems like if she had her ring, going to the 30 one would be such a power down. Which is exactly why they had to get rid of the ring. Okay, any other notes? Hawkmon tells Davis to settle down, and that's great. Hawkmon also says, Harumph, at some point. Harumph. Which is a great thing to say. And Flame Drummond's voice is really cool. Yes. And the battles were a bit naff. They were basically just use and attack. One and done. And the in-trainings are cute. Who would you say is your favourite of the new partners? Probably Armadillamon, because he's, like, the only saving grace for Cody. <laughs> Could you imagine having Cody as your partner? I find it really hard, because they're all quite different, as opposed to the original kids who weren't as... Uh, Design-wise, they were different, but they were quite samey a lot of the time. Because there were so many of them, but with there being three, they're all quite different. Like, they've got different voices and they act in different ways. I like how Armadillamon's sleepy all the time. Apparently this is a character trait, which I don't remember. And I think it doesn't happen again. Because I don't remember him being sleepy the entire time. But yeah, I think Armadillamon's quite nice. I like Hawkmon's design, but not so much voice. I quite like the voice. And then Vimon's a happy go-getter. Who was your standout character? My standout character was the Digimon Emperor. Because he's actually been pretty affected throughout the entire series so far. He caught Davis in like two minutes and he coordinated all of his attacks. Okay, I have an issue with that in the next thing we talk about. But yes, you, you keep talking. And he took Davis's stuff, which is a good idea. And was basically going to take his Digimon and make him completely powerless. We'll talk about it in a second though, because I've got something about that in the favourite thing. But my standout character is the opposite of a standout character. It's Cody. <laughs> because he's so uninterested in what's, got, what's going on. And he's got so little emotion. And I feel like it's the voice. If they just change his voice, he might not sound so bored. But he just sounds so bored the entire time. He just seems so... Uh, dead inside <laughs> yeah just so disinterested so congrats cody for pulling me out of the story each and every time you speak and or are there and for having the least interesting costume change ever i really hope he develops later on in the in the season and i can't remember if he does or not but at the moment he's he feels like the weakest character and there's so little going on he's the weakest link what was your favorite thing 
My favourite thing is the Emperor's plan, because it's kind of garbage. How is it garbage? So, he wants to take Davis's stuff away and make Vimon part of his army, correct? So why does he not just put the ring on Vimon? Like, why does he have to put them in the wall? Which sounds like it would have taken so much more effort and work. And waited for Davis to wake up. Why didn't he just put the ring on him then? Because he wants to taunt Davis and make him suffer. For why? He's never met him before. Because he's evil, and they were in what he considers to be his world without his permission. Yeah, but he's never met him before, and it would have been worse if he'd woken up and then got murdered by Vimon, as opposed to just watching Vimon get uh, infected slowly but surely, getting there with that ring. What was your favourite thing? My favourite thing is Dromojimon, because I actually really like Dromojimon. I especially like them in Digimon World, because their final attack is awesome. They send out tons of drills and things. And it's a really cool design. I like how your things are like, oh, I like this, it's kind of fun, and I'm just like, meh, meh, Cody, meh, Emperor, meh. Plus it was cool when he just ran straight through the ground, digging as he went, which probably makes no sense in terms of physics, but it just looks cool. And he somehow still got blocked off by Digimon. He could have just turned around and run away, but whatever. Dromodemon's just a cool Digimon. Next question. Filler or not filler, and why you think that? I think it's not filler, because they get lots of new Digimon and DigiX. That's the only reason. Yeah, we get new partners. Okay, yeah, that's the only thing that makes it not filler. Overall thoughts? It was all right. That was my entire thoughts. Okay, I think the problem with this season is the writing. I'm trying to be super conscious of the writing this season because it's. I think it's the problem I have with this, this entire season now. It's so random. But looking at what's going on, and if you explain the plot to somebody without the actual lines that they say it sounds quite good like they've just come back from the digital world the new kids have just seen davis come out like i want to go as well you know it sounds really fun to go to this other world and the old kids are talking about how they can't do anything now so it's up to these new kids so the new kids go and they end up finding their own partners which is exciting and they also find out about the emperor who's this other kid who doesn't come out at night who also wants to take over the digital world and stuff and how he kidnapped someone's partner and he was going to try and make them evil It sounds good, but when you get the lines and, like, some of the stuff, it just is a bit, eh. Like, it's kind of bad. Like, there weren't as many bad lines as the first, but this didn't really feel amazing. It felt almost like they were doing a school play. Like, Cody doesn't know his lines very well. The costume designer made some poor decisions, and the older kids were written in at the last minute, essentially. Okay, anything else? We didn't really learn that much about Cody and Yoli, despite it being their episode. I felt it was more about Davis needing to be rescued and everything. Next up is the Double Trouble header. Ash and Co. say how they liked seeing Totodile and Cyndaquil, but it's a shame that they didn't see a Chikorita, so the plot decides to drop one literally in front of them. They meet a girl called Casey, who is a Electabuzz baseball team fan, who has a Chikorita. Ash battles her with a Charizard because he likes being unfair and smug about it. Then Team Rocket are also there trying to catch Pikachu or something, and they get blasted off and Ash and Co. leave for somewhere else. <laughs> It starts off with everybody saying how they liked Totodile because it was cool, and they also liked Cyndaquil. And then Brock says, oh, it's too bad we didn't see a Chikorita. Ten seconds later, they find a girl who's got a Chikorita right in front of them. It's, oh yeah, here comes the plot, here it is. Oh no, it's a shame they didn't find eight badges on the floor. <laughs> Brock says, looks like that girl is a new Pokemon trainer and got her new Pokemon from New Bark Town from Professor Elm. There's so much in that sentence. Like, it's so specific. Brock, calm down. We can assume that she got the Chikorita from New Bark Town. If you go like, oh, it's a new Pokemon trainer. She must have come from New Bark Town. We can assume the rest, okay? I refer to her as a chick with a Chikorita. I didn't realise her name until, like, halfway through the episode. They only say it, like, halfway through the episode. Is it a reference to something, or is it just a name? I don't know sport. Neither do I. Like, right at the start of the episode, I say the baseball thing might get old soon. It gets old really quickly. She does sports commentary as she fights, and my problem with this is, fights are supposed to be quite quick, So why is she adding so many extra flourishes with talking about baseball metaphors? Surely if something's running at you, you don't want to be like, oh, the star player does this, this, and this. Like You'd be like, just dodge to the left. You wouldn't have to come up with all this extra bit of information. But yeah, she manages to fight and catch a Rattata, which is kind of cool, I guess. I feel sorry for him because he's got to live a life with sports metaphors. She kind of cheats with that. She knocks it out and then catches it anyway, which you can't do in the games. Yeah, but that's the games. It's not this world. This isn't fair. She killed the Rattata and then caught it anyway. Well, she spots Ash and 
runs up and grabs Pikachu because she loves the colour yellow because she's a fan of the Electabuzz sports team. And she's asking Pikachu to shock her and Pikachu's like, uh, like super nervous. He's got sparks on his cheeks. Like, do I do it? But Ash tries to stop her, but stop them. And they all get electrocuted. And she's like, this was a bad idea. And Ash is like, yeah, yes, it was. Which is kind of funny. So then they all introduce themselves to her. And Misty says, everyone calls me Misty. I'm like, yes, because that's your name. I thought it was a bit weird. It was. Everyone calls me Misty. Yes, they will, because it's your name. It comes better from me, where it's like, oh, my name's Steven, but everyone calls me Stevie. Yeah, see, that works so much better. But I wouldn't go, everyone calls me Sam. My name's Sam. So, so thanks, Misty. Thank you for coming up with, I think, one of her three lines in this episode. And it's this one. She says so well. So Casey follows a team called the Electabuzz. And Ash says how they always lose. And how can they beat the Starmie and the Magikarp? I didn't know Ash was a baseball fan. Yeah, he becomes a baseball fan for no reason. All of a sudden, everyone knows baseball. Like, he knows all about the Electabuzz and how they always lose. And he says he's seen better swings on the playground. I'm like, Ash, you're not a sports fan. You've never once gone, by the way, I like baseball. We've never seen baseball before, but here we go. It's come up once when Gary referenced a Grand Slam, and that's pretty much it. So, Ash upsets her, and she challenges him to a battle. To defend her baseball team's honour. And they fight. With the Pokemon. She calls out a Pidgey, which is understandable, considering how in New Bark Town you can find basically like Hoot Hoot, Pidgey, Rasta and stuff. Nothing too powerful. Ash starts monologuing about, oh, I remember my first journey when I first saw my Pidgey. And then he gets told off for like monologuing, basically. And then he's like, fine, I send out Charizard. And he reminds me of in online games or something, and you'll find the guy who's level 100 and he's fighting level 1 guys and bragging how strong he is. That's what Ash is doing right now. Yeah, it's a pretty boring battle as well. There's a lot of things just bouncing off of Charizard. And then with Chikorita, who is weak to fire types, he's like, use Flamethrower, but do it really carefully. It's like, oh my god, that's that's just so much worse than anything else. So he does, and then he stood there with his arms folding, acting smug. And she cries and runs away, because Ash is like, let's be friends now. And he, she's like, no, you're an a- go away. And then Ash is saying, well, that's what happens when you challenge a great trainer. And I'm like, I hate you so much right now. Oh, I'm the best. I'm so strong against a child. They're the same age, aren't they? Because Ash doesn't age. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. That's weird. He's got a couple years of experience on it, even though they're exactly the same age still, because he never ages. Ash is smug and defeated a child. Yay. The Chikorita got to dance around while it was burning alive. That was fun. That was kind of cute, though. It was cute. Yeah. So Casey runs away and falls over and we get backstory. It's such an interesting backstory. My entire family have no personality and just really like this one baseball team. And then you're going to do Pokemon. Go and do the Pokemon thing now. You can do it. So Team Rocket appear, pretending to be Electabuzz fans as well. Why? I don't know, but here they are. And they're calling Ash a cheater. Why? I don't know, but here they are. They plan defeating Ash again. So Casey challenges Ash to another battle. And Ash uses Pikachu. Oh, they're at like a baseball stadium as well. I don't know why they're there, but okay. That's a good point. Where is this baseball stadium? Don't know, but Team Rocket activates some robots who are cheering and saying, gotta catch them all. They're really creepy as well. And they're blowing balloons. I don't know why, but okay. Cheering on Casey. So they've somehow managed to build all this stuff. Ash uses Pikachu and Pikachu uses Thundershock against Chikorita and it reflects it. And Brock says that grass Pokemon are strong against electric types. Are they? No, they're resistant to electric, but they're not strong against electric. That's a bit nitpicky. That's not really. It's still like they have a defensive advantage against electric types, so they are strong against electric attacks. Being resistant to something doesn't mean you're strong against it. If Chikorita hits Pikachu with a a grass attack, it's not super effective. It's not any more powerful than it would normally be. It's just an electric attack is weaker against a grass type. That's not being strong against an electric type. It is. It's not, though. They're being strong against the electric attack. (laughs) They're not strong against it, though. They are strong defensively against electric types. It just sounds weird to me. It's a bit like saying, uh, like... This should be good. You fire a gun at a bulletproof vest and it bounces off the vest. You're saying that that vest is strong against that gun. It's not strong against the gun. It's just resistant to the bullet. It's strong against bullets. I think it was fine. It seemed right. I don't know. It's a it's a bit nitpicky, but in a show where type advantage is, is kind of a mechanic, you can't really say that this is strong against this when it's not. But it is. So, he's perfectly correct. It's resistant to it. That's not it being strong against it. Strong doesn't mean resistant or super effective. It just means strong. So it's fine. If I say grass Pokemon are strong against electric types and ground Pokemon are strong against electric types, that sounds like they're in the same category, but it's not. Whatever. 
Brock could have chosen his words better, but he's not wrong. Okay, I'm, I'm being nitpicky, but I'm going to be nitpicky because Misty also says that we need to call her Misty because people call her Misty. So Team Rocket send out a baseball robot attack thing and it hits Chikorita and Pikachu out of the field into like Team Rocket's area. And then they stand up and they do the motto and it's like a baseball themed motto, which I quite like. I'm really happy with this. I think it's probably like the best bit of the show is just this baseball themed stuff. And then they press another button and ball launchers appear. Like there's so much baseball themed stuff. All they needed to do was have a machine that picks up Pikachu and Chikorita and runs away but instead they've got these robots that just cheer and then they've got this one with a baseball bat that knocks them away and then they've got this other ones which are just ball launchers that are throwing balls at Ash and Casey and then Casey's like oh we should give up I'm like no you can't be like oh let's give up straight away but the only reason they said that is so Ash can be all like no we've got to do this I'm gonna make some baseball puns to really make you fired up because Ash is the main character. And then he gets hit in the face. Which I'm happy with. I saw it coming. So Casey starts hitting baseballs back at Team Rocket. And then they send out some of their own Pokemon like Squirtle and stuff. And then they use attacks and Pikachu and Chikorita get knocked away. And then they use tackle on Team Rocket and Team Rocket gets sent blasting off. And then it's the end of the day because it's always sunset when Ash and Co leave. And they're like, yay, we did a thing today. I don't know what we did or why Team Rocket was there, but we did a thing. Bye. Then they set off in separate directions. Where are they both going? No idea. Where's Casey going? Okay, so what was Team Rocket's idea here was just, oh, let's go catch Pikachu. Yeah, but let's do it with a baseball theme because that's the theme this episode. Any more notes about this episode? There was a good joke from Brock where he started rooting for Casey because he's used to rooting for the underdog and Ash is usually the underdog. Who was your standout character? Casey, because she was the new one and she was very loud and hyperactive. She had an electric personality. But doesn't have electric types. She also loves yellow Pokemon, but doesn't have a yellow one yet, which is such a weird trait to have. She also has a headband for just Chikorita. Because Chikorita's her favourite. And the others know this. My standout character was Misty and Brock, because what were they doing when Team Rocket attacked? They could have helped. (laughs) They have their own Pokemon. They could be doing anything. You seem to think that the standout character means whoever stands out least, and therefore by extension stands out most. (laughs) No, it's whichever one you notice the most or you think about the most in the episode. They stood out to me the most because Misty seemed really stupid in this episode. Actually, they both did because they both came up with some weird stuff and then they were both stood there whilst Team Rocket were firing baseballs at Ash and a girl. I think Brock stood out more out of two of them just because he's taller. What was your favourite thing? Chikorita dancing around on fire because it was really cute. To be fair, it was quite cute. Panicking and hopping. They lasted a good length of time before they finally just died. Well, it's going to be really low level. It doesn't even seem to like know too many grass attacks who knows raised leaf grass pokemon evolve quite quickly as well so it's got to be really weak anyway my favorite thing is pikachu when she's like you should use an electric attack on me and he's just like uh okay i'm gonna do it and she's like no don't do it and he's like okay i'm gonna do it his little expression is like he feels really awkward but he's like i guess i've got to do this i've got to shock this child now filler or not filler definitely filler absolutely yeah we don't get anything we see a chikorita but even then that felt so contrived of we haven't met a chikorita yet here you go we knew this wasn't enough to fill a whole episode though so here have lots of baseball references as well overall thoughts it's kind of boring it's literally like they talk about a chikorita they see a chikorita they battle it twice this baseball nothing happens and it's just filled to the brim with baseball references and i don't know a lot about baseball ash is also smug throughout a lot of it as well yeah it's just very blair episode now it's time for mono a mono where we attempt to compare these episodes so what new mons do we get let's start with well there's none in pokemon so i guess we're starting with digimon well we got chikorita we discussed chikorita last episode like half discussed chikorita half it's close enough (laughs) okay fine it was a plant it's fine okay armadillamon and hawkmon the two big ones I think I prefer Hawkmon's design because it's just got a, more colours in it than Armadillamon has. Armadillamon's just a yellow armadillo, which is really simple. Also, they're more expressive. Like, they can move a lot more. Like, when they jump out of the light, it's all like wings are spread and it's really happy. With Armadillamon, he can't really move too much. He's always in that, like, slumped over pose. He's designed to just curl up into a ball. Okay, Hulsamon and Digmon. The wings of love and the drill of power. <laughs> I think I preferred wholesome on wholesome on does look really cool kind of like digmon more digmon's pretty bulky 
Digmon out of all three is the one that's the furthest away from its original design, if you look at it. Because Flame Drummon is just stretched out Vimon with armor. Hulsamon is just stretched out Hawkmon with armor. And then Digmon is stretched out Armadillamon with drills. Well, not really. He becomes a bug type thingy. And it's like he's now stood up on his back legs and has extra legs and drills. I don't think it's that much of a stretch still. Yeah, but he's the furthest away from the original design. Not that much. I think they're all pretty much just the same sort of concept of just make it a bit bigger, maybe stretch it out a little and add some sharp bits. And there's your armor Digimon. Actually, yeah. They've all got sharp bits. Halsamon's got the wing blades. Flamedomon's got the claws and Digmon's got drills. <laughs> I do like Digmon's color scheme though. Yellow and purple is cool. But Halsamon has pink claws, which is nice. Are those the only new ones we get? We also get the three in training Digimon. Oh yeah, Upamon, Demi Vimon, and Poromon. Wow, well, you remembered. I almost called it Poyomon, but I like Demi Vimon, it's quite cute. I think all three of them are cute. Upamon's boring. But Upamon does have the best personality when we see them. Upamon just really likes eating, if I remember right. Who was your monster of the week and why? My monster of the week was Hawkmon, because they told Davis to settle down. Okay, um mine's probably Wormmon. <laughs> Because we see him again, like, for the briefest moment, and he's basically there to stand in front of the Emperor against the champion level. Still gets beaten. I still quite like, like, Wormmon. It's adorable. Wormmon's cute. Next question, the big one. Who was worse, Ash or Davis? I think Ash. Like, before this, I didn't think about it that much, but after we discussed it more, it was definitely Ash. Davis was just a go-getter in this episode. He wasn't, like, oogling over Kari or anything, and it was good. But with Ash... He went up against literally a new trainer. I was like, oh yeah, I'll battle you. That's fine. I'll send out my strongest Pokemon. And then Axel smug when he wins. And it's like, this is what happens when you fight a great trainer. And it's like, he was being so smug about it. And then he's making like, he basically insulted this girl's team as well. Saying how they're not good at all. I'm like, so why are you like this, Ash? Why have you found this new trainer and decided just to break her from the start? So Ash is the worst this time around. Yeah, they were both pretty cocky, but Ash was more smug about it. Which storyline did you prefer? Digimon. And me, because Pokemon just doesn't really have a strong storyline. Pokemon's was just run of the mill, but with baseball sprinkled on top. Any similarities? There was starter Digimon slash Pokemon, and the battles were always very short and quick and a bit boring. I couldn't really think of any similarities this time around. There's lots of stock footage. Oh yeah, yeah, there was a lot of uh, just use the attack Use the attack to win. Go, Pokemon. Go, Digimon. I guess one similarity is this returning things, like with Charizard and the original kids. Like, things from the, the first season. But that's really loose. And apart from that, I couldn't really find anything. There just weren't that many similarities, because nothing happened in Pokemon besides baseball. Differences? Pokemon had a lot of baseball. One thing that I'm quite aware of is how this episode of Digimon starts immediately after the first one. Like, if you took out the ending credits and the opening title and stuck the two together, it could probably become, like, a, a, a long episode. And you wouldn't be able to tell. And then with Pokemon, it's in its own little dimension. Like, this, they're not really doing anything. They came from New Barktown. They go into Violet City. Apart from that, it's, like, just nothing. They're not in a place. They're not in a town. They're in a forest. They're in a baseball diamond. I think Digimon had more stakes to it as well. Because, like, Davis got kidnapped and everything and all that was going on. And they finally met the Emperor as well. I mean, Pikachu got kidnapped, but that was for all of, like, Two minutes. Chikorita was also taken, but we don't care. Which episode do you think deserves the point and why? I think we're both going to agree on this one. I think that Digimon deserves the point. Yeah. Pokemon was just really boring and oversaturated in baseball references. There was just no substance to it whatsoever. Do you think you'd get to enjoy the episode more like if you were a baseball fan? I don't know if you would, because... It's just references. It's just, oh, I know that thing. And then it, it's just that a million times. It would have been cool if they actually played a game of baseball in the episode about baseball. Yeah, if they used Pokemon to make baseball teams or something, that would be fun. It said it's just battles with lots of baseball jokes. I mean, Digimon wasn't much better. It was pretty bland as well, but it still had more to it than Pokemon this week. We got introduced to new characters, and they're like some of the better characters for the season. And the Digimon do look cool, and I do like the Emperor. So that means that the score is one each? Yeah, I think Pokemon just let itself down by restricting Team Rocket too much to baseball. They also didn't feel like they needed to be there, they were just there for no reason, and they made everything about baseball. It just felt so extra for them. 
Plus, it felt just shadier than usual for them to actually manipulate someone else into helping them. It wasn't as simple as usual. Like, it's all circumstantial. Like, if she hadn't run away, they wouldn't have been able to talk to her to get her to go to the thingy. I mean, Digimon has plenty of plot conveniences as well, but it's still better than Pokemon. It's not quite as bad as, like, oh, we haven't seen a Chikorita yet. Here's a Chikorita. The only real plot convenience we had from Digimon was these two eggs are the eggs of the quests that you two have. Yeah, it is all just about the characters being in the right places at the right times in Digimon. I guess that's a similarity. Cool. Administration across the nation. This is a theme song. It's not very long. Well, I've sang the song, so now we have to do the actual administration stuff. I'm waiting on you. So, we had a message from Riku on the Lost in Translation Mon Slack, which says... Okay, so I listened to the newest episode of the Moncast, and now I can't stop laughing at the word ankles. Did we say the word ankles enough? I don't think we said it enough. Not enough, I meant, okay, I've woken up about half an hour ago, so I'm still not fully awake yet, so words will not be my strong point today. Then again, when are they my strong point? Did we say it a lot in that episode? It was the episode where we worked out that a Digi's Destined is measured by the strength of their ankles. Oh yeah, I remember this now. We talked about ankles a lot for some reason. There was a lot of ankle discussion for a, a podcast that doesn't focus on ankles, surprisingly. It was fun, though. Welcome to the Moncast, which we talk about Pokemon Digimon and ankles. Well, there is going to be Ankylomon later. No! <laughs> I also shared something on Twitter, which was a picture of Cody, where he has speedboats for feet. Oh yeah, is that the one where he just he stood at the most awkward angle? More awkward than he normally is? Because Cody is an awkward child, so this is like twice as awkward as he normally is. He stood side on and his feet are just, they are speedboats that they've just strapped to the end of his legs. Well, one of them's normal foot shaped and then the other one's like the front foot is like just boat shape, basically. I'm looking at it again and the length of his foot is the same as the length of his leg. Also, his hand has no details whatsoever. It's just a ball. He doesn't have fingers. Whoever drew this should be ashamed. Well, it's O2. It's all, like, cut corners and stuff. But they put on more foot than was needed. I don't think they know the adequate proportion for foot. What is the correct amount of foot required for this season? It shouldn't be a foot long. It's that simple. But there were a couple of replies to that picture. One was, I'm styling, dude, from Wildwing64. Which is, of course, a reference to Greymon. The best Digimon. Who's always styling. And the other reply from Redfield70x7 was, You know what they say. And what do they say, Sam? I don't know what they say. Something about, if you have big feet, then you must have a big mm-mm as well. Something about, if you're poorly animated, your season's probably bad. I think they do say that as well. And that's pretty much all of the feedback that we had. So now we can just go on to what we've done, I guess. Yeah, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh, you can start. I've done a little Pokemon stuff and a little Digimon stuff this week. Pokemon wise, I've been playing Pokemon Go. I, like, yeah, people still play that game for some reason. There's an event at the moment, which is like the Solstice event, and you can get Ice Pokemon and Fire Pokemon a lot, which are quite hard to find naturally. It's still good, still as good as it was, which wasn't that good. Well, it was never going to be amazing. It's just a a walking game where you can swipe Pokeballs. But I was one of the fools who bought one of the Pokemon Go Pluses and. I used it like three times and then I don't use it because it's not as fun. It literally turns into your wrist is now glowing yellow, press it. Your wrist is now glowing green, press it. Your wrist is now glowing rainbow colours, press it. It's good, but it's not as fun as the actual game. You don't have to aim the Pokeballs. No, it does it all automatically and it like it takes the minimum amount of fun you get from Pokemon Go. It takes all of that away for £30 extra. Spend £30, lose all of the gameplay. Yeah, it's almost like reverse DLC. <laughs> I pay money to get less game. We'll streamline it so much that there's just no game left anymore. It's good for when you're jogging and stuff and you want to catch Pokemon, but to be fair, like, I don't jog that much. Have you done any Pokemon-based stuff? I've done no Pokemon-based stuff. Unless you count trying to get Pokemon badges from the Nintendo Badge Arcade. Then I have done Pokemon stuff. But that's like the, the tiniest of Pokemon things. So I have some Pikachus in one of my folders now. That's good. I basically only get them when there's ground types because they're cool. I want to get a Butterfree, but every time they come up, I just can't catch it. Oh, there's the Pixel ones, which are like the sprites from the game. that I get those, they're quite good. Yeah, the Pixel ones are good. Any Digimon stuff you've done this week? I've been watching Savers again, but I've watched the first 10 episodes of it and I'm still enjoying it. Like, I still quite like it. That's good. 
because you'll have to cover it again in three years. I feel like I shouldn't be watching it now whilst we watch O2. I think I'll be just saying O2 isn't as good. But it was nice to have a little bit of watching and sit and just enjoy my favourite season, which I haven't seen in a while. It's all right. You played a bit over Skype and I knew everything that was happening because the characters just say what happens out loud all the time. I know there's the rumour that like Digimon's made for boys and stuff, but I feel like if there was a season that's aimed specifically at like 13-year-old boys, it's it's season five completely. But I like it. It's not trying to be super deep or whatever they people say Tamers is supposed to be. But I've seen it before and I remember more of it than I do Frontier. I watch episodes of Frontier and then I don't remember them the next day. I've watched all of Frontier and I remember extremely little of it. I don't understand how that was actually 50 episodes long when I remember barely 50 seconds of it. Have you done anything Digimon related then? Yes, I have. Just today, actually, because I've carried on putting up Digimon but without Digimon on YouTube because I find them really funny. So episode 10 of that's gone up on my YouTube channel and it's really, really good because it's such a dumb concept. (laughs) I find the episodes funny. The plot gets weird when you take out the Digimon. (laughs) The plot still makes perfect sense. It just skips all the battles, really. It's just kids just stood there being confused by what's going on. All the battles just turn into flashing lights and sound effects, followed by a black gear exploding. Uh, but there's such a good line that came out of this episode, which was just Mimi going, Yum, bananas! Now we can pretend we're eating bananas! Great. Uh, I like it when silly lines like that happen. Anything else you want to talk about? I drew a pixie man that looks like an old man. Okay, how do you pronounce his name? Because I, I pronounce it in a certain way. I just think it's Chiswick. Oh, I say Chiswick. I honestly don't know what Chiswick is. It's just something that came up in my phone's autocorrect. Well, because we're British, we like to have excessive amount of like letters that we don't pronounce. So to spell Chiswick, it's like C-H-I-S-W-I-C-K. Chiswick. But then we say Chiswick. Well, the character is called Chiswick. I just found it at random in my phone. I was like, that's a cool name. For a character, I guess. So then I, I turned his Piximon into a Sensei type character. And then you've also drawn a Myotismon. Yes, I've drawn a Myotismon sleeping on the ceiling and looking a bit emo. Do you want to say why you drew it? I was commissioned, so I was paid money to draw it. Because for some reason, people want to pay me sometimes to draw things. And you can pay me too <laughs> if you go to my Tumblr. I definitely recommend paying me to draw things. Which segues nicely into my Patreon update. I have done an update to my Patreon, so there's tons of rewards that I'm going to try and sound super excited about because I think some of them are actually really fun. So I'm just going to go through all the rewards that you can get and what the prices are, and then you can go check it out if you want to donate to me and get some cool stuff and support me in not running out of money, because that'd be great. First of all, for $1, you can get notifications about whenever episodes go up for podcasts I've been on or anything else like that. And you also get early access to the Games I Played podcast, which will be returning very, very soon next Wednesday. So you'll get like a week early access to those episodes before they go up on YouTube for free for everyone to watch. And that's a podcast where I talk about games I've played to completion. And the next one will be on Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which I completed about a month ago now. So it will be fun to try and remember how that actually was to play. The next tier, which is $3 a month, gets you a line art drawing of whatever you fancy. So this is a slightly reduced price to one tumble where it's $5. This will be $3 plus whatever tax it is. And once per month, you can get a line art as well as everything from the previous tiers. And I'm getting pretty good at drawing Digimon, or at least I think so anyway. So you might want to check that out if you just want a cool little drawing of something every month. The next tier is multiplayer buddies where once per month we can organise a time to play a game that we both have. That can be something like Overwatch, it can be Rocket League, it can be anything else we both own, as long as it's on a console that we both own it on. Just organise a time and we can play a game for like half an hour or an hour or whatever, and we can have some fun. I play Overwatch and Rocket League a lot, so it'll be fun to play it with some listeners. The next tier, which is $10 per month, gets you raw, uncut episodes of the Moncast. So I asked Sam for permission for this because I didn't want to just put them up there as a reward without asking him first. This is just the entire episode without any editing, apart from like the obvious cleaning out the background noise and syncing it up. You'll get absolutely everything in order as it was recorded. All the tangents, everything will be in there. (laughs) There'll be nothing removed. Do I swear? I feel like I swear a lot. You f*** do. (laughs) I think I've started swearing because it's O2 and it's Cody, but I'm not sure if I swear that often. There won't be any bleeps. So you'll get things like political tangents in the middle of episodes. 
talking about death because I'm sure we talk about death a lot more than we we should talk about death. Yes, yeah, so you'll just get a lot of random stuff that we usually filter out because it's got nothing to do with Pokemon and Digimon. There'll always be like a cat interlude because at some point a cat will appear because I have cats and they like to be around everything. You'll get all of Sam's little interjections of, oh, by the way, I'm very tired. Oh yeah, you'll get a lot of those. So yeah, that's $10 per month, which gets you the four raw episodes every month. So that'll be starting in July when payments next come through for Patreon. And the last tier, at least until I come up with more rewards anyway, is for a full colour artwork piece thing. So it's not just line art, it's line art and it will be fully coloured and polished up and whatever. You'll get the full shebang, as I call it. And you get one of those once per month, as well as the line art versions. And I'll even try and stream it for you whenever you're free. I will stream myself drawing it so you can, we can chat while I'm drawing it. And that'll be really fun. And it's cheaper than it is on my Tumblr. And you get all of the stuff from lower tiers as well. So it's all really, really good. So definitely go check those out if you want art and raw episodes and just to play games with me and chat in live streams or whatever else. Because... It's an exchange, isn't it? You give me money, you support me, you support the show, and you get some cool stuff in return. And that's how Patreon works. And then I just say thank you a billion times. And then a billion times more, just to be safe. And then you go buy, like, a billion custard creams. Hey, I'm down to two packs a week. I was on three, and even then I was running out by the sixth day. <laughs> that's a lot of custard creams. Yeah, it is. That's why I need this Patreon. I need a bigger custard cream budget. It's just, I like money, but you've crossed out the word money and put custard creams. Yeah, if I could be paid in custard creams, I'd be set. Thank you to everyone that does go to even just look at that, even if you can't afford anything. I'm super grateful. So I'm just going to say my Patreon link, which is www.patreon.com slash Stevie Patmore, all one word. So now you know where to go if you want to get cool stuff. And I hope that wasn't too boring for everyone listening. Did you want to plug something? I feel like we should plug things. Every, like, every podcast doesn't do plug stuff now, so... What, plug something that we've been enjoying? Yes! <laughs> Are we going to plug our hugs? We're not saying those words. So what we're doing now is we're ripping off Podigious. Are we going to plug our hugs? Well, since you suggested it, you can go first. Okay, I'm going to recommend a book series. I don't know if y'all read or not, but there's something called Skull Degree Pleasant. It's set in Ireland. It's about magic and stuff. Started reading it when I was in high school, which is a long time ago. But two weeks ago, the newest book came out, which is like, it's it's set after like the main set of books. Almost like Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So it's like, it's got similar characters, people from the, from the first set of books. But it's, it's focusing on some other people as well. Um, and this next arc of books is going to focus on these characters more. But it's funnier than harry potter it's not as serious as harry potter it it's just really cool it's it's been a, a book series that i've followed for a long time and the the last book came out for this arc last year and it was really sad and good but it basically follows a girl called stephanie edgley who finds out that she's got abilities it's also crime ish because the main character is called the pleasant a detective but he's a skeleton in really expensive suits and that's all explained in, in some of the books and stuff. Um, it's quite good. It's quite creative and quite good. So if you like Skeleton Detective and his young assistant who is edgy, I highly recommend them. I'm going to plug Overwatch, even though it's been out forever, because I've been playing it a lot recently, just with my sister online on PS4. And it's a, just a really fun multiplayer shooter game. I'm not very good at it. Well, neither am I, but I still have fun. Who do you play as? I play as everyone. I don't main people. <laughs> I've been playing Bastion a lot because he can heal himself. I point in the vague direction. Sometimes I'm not even pointing in their direction. So I need characters who are either good at healing or good at getting away. When I'm playing the 3v3 eliminations with my sister and a friend, I tend to take up the tank role. So I'm getting better with like Roadhog and Diva and Orisa. I don't do those. I literally just do quick play. My partner plays Overwatch, which is really good. Is it like level 500 and something? Well, he's already prestiged five times. Yes. Yeah, my sister's double prestiged, and I'm, like, level 40-something still. He's very good at the game. I watch him play it, and, like, he just destroys loads of people and gets played to the game and stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I sit and try and have a go at it, and I'm like, I I'm not very good at it. Just give me Monster Hunter. Like, I know how the characters work, but I'm just not great at first-person shooters, so I'm not the best at it. But I have fun. Yeah, well, to be fair, like, I don't really play... Shoot 'em ups, but I quite like Overwatch. Shoot 'em ups and first person shooters are different things. Like shoot 'em ups don't have spaceships. They're called shmups. Well, I like shmups, but I don't like first person shooters. I just want to tell a quick story about 
how I got a card. But if you're one of the best players in a team, you get a card at the end of the game. And we lost this game. So only one of us got a card, and it was me, and we were on attack, and I was playing Torbjorn, who's a defense character with a turret, and somehow I was the only card on the team, which means me playing a defensive character on attack was still better than everyone else, which just shows that the random people we were playing with were god-awful. You may have played with me at one point. Nah, I'm on uh, Xbox One. Ooh. It's not my Xbox One, I've got a PlayStation 4. Get it on PS4 and we can play together. I don't play that much, honestly. Get it on PS4 and then you will play it that much. You think I have free time to do things? Yes, we do this podcast every week. So what I'm saying is we should just give up the Moncast and just play Overwatch instead. It's become an Overwatch podcast. No, just play Overwatch. Join us again next time and we'll be discussing the third episodes. A sappy ending and a new digitude. You can listen to more of us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher, where we like getting reviews and comments. And you can message us via our Facebook, Twitter, with the Royal Thread and email, which are all linked in the show notes. Thank you for listening. Bye. 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 It's odd, which is you. No, it's two. It's episode. <laughs> you know. We're off to a great start. Did you know that number two is an even number? Yes, I did. I legit thought for a second. No, one's an even one, and it's, it's even odd, even odd. Okay. Mac and cheese would definitely stop me going, but band practice, maybe not. Okay, I think you need to uh, sort out your priorities. I really like just any sort of pasta covered with cheese. Okay, as a little side note, one of my favourite meals is literally just like a bowl of pasta and you just grate some cheese on it and mix it in and it becomes like just a mess of cheese and pasta. It's so good. I like it when you if have feel- tomatoes as well, though. Or if you're feeling fancy, put a bit of bacon in it. Mm. That's so good. I'm going to text my partner and see if you can get some <laughs> pasta and cheese. Okay, so... Is that a car or a motorbike? That's a car. We um, haven't had the motorbike yet. He's waiting around the corner till we get halfway through. <laughs> One sec, I'm just talking to my partner about some. Are they uh, sorting out pasta? No, they said uh, the newspapers in the in um, thingy make him sick because the headlines. One of them's like, "Vote for me today." Yeah, that's... this is a political episode, an unexpected political episode, and he's just saying about how the headlines are all like disgusting or like. Oh, don't let the terrorists get to you and vote for this person. Well, of course, all the newspapers want the Tories because the newspapers want to be rich. Mm. Just don't read newspapers. They suck. They don't give you news anymore. They just give you opinions. Mm. Yeah, that's why I I get all my news from online and stuff. Yellow Pokemon and stuff, because that's also why she loves the Electabuzz sports. There he is. (laughs) Yay. Okay. You can listen to more of us on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Stitcher, where we like getting reviews and comments. And you can message us via our Facebook, Twitter, and with the World Thread, and also email, which are also linked in the show notes. I said that very <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Oh dear. Way to go, Skype. Way to go, my internet. You are supremely... Yeah, your internet suddenly, suddenly dropped. <laughs> I didn't hear a single thing that you said, apart from like well, the I last... Sang like the song. The last half a second of like... The uh, intro song. Well, that's all that you need. <laughs> it really isn't very long oh, for you back. then if you only heard the end. Oh, well. We Why get, is we my internet so f- <laughs> f- <laughs> f- 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 balls? You've got to beep that all out now. That's your own doing. No, I, I, I'm just going to edit it all out. That's why I'm doing it, because it's fun. <laughs> what would you like to start with? Anything in particular? Or should I just go for it? Pardon? <laughs> I love it. It's It's... it's Works perfectly until you need to start recording and then it just doesn't work at all. It was working fine. What What is wrong with it, really? Honestly. Has it lifted back up? Because you sound okay now. It's like the second you want to start talking about some. Okay, yeah, it seems to go... It's, it's back to normal. Honestly. Ah, it's probably because we've got housemates watching Netflix.
and hogging <sighs> all the internet waves. Oh well. Well, just get rid of them. Just get rid of them. It's fine. I'll just have to murder them. It's the only solution. <laughs> I mean, I can't just ask them nicely. That's just unreasonable. I have to kill them. They'll probably say no, so you, you've got to murder them, basically. Mm. This is this is a testimony. This is this is evidence. This is what this is evidence <laughs> that they'll put in court and play in court when the murders begin. Yeah, but then they'll just be like, it was in self-defense of the podcast and the recording, so it's fine. Hmm, something tells me they won't be so uh, lenient. They will. You'll testify for me. That's essentially the same as, like, breaking the law and then your defense is, do it for the vine. (laughs) (laughs) And they're like, to be fair, you did it for the vine. (laughs) But vine's dead. It is. Rip vine. (laughs) Okay, Edman, we're doing it. 